So with the new version of Elementor, you're going to have access to a particular new feature or element called the Flexbox Container. If you were to go to Elementor settings and then experiments, you would see it right here, Flexbox Container Active. This is meant to replace the old school uh, section column uh, element provided by Elementor. It's going to be faster. It's also going to give you more, more control on how you want to display the elements uh, inside of your container. So this is a much improved way of displaying your elements in columns and so on. And to display how it works, we're actually going to build out this particular structure right here where you've got two columns. One column on the left will have the header, two paragraphs of text and then two buttons. And then on the right, we're going to have several images, but notice something very, very interesting that in the first column, the first three elements, the header, the first paragraph of text, the second paragraph, paragraph of text are lined up on top of each other, while the two buttons right here are side by side. Same goes with the images in the right column. You've got two images in the first row, two images on the second row, but then on the third row, you have three images. So this is a little bit more advanced than the usual uh, two column structure or three column structure. So I'm going to show you how you can achieve this by using the new uh, Flexbox container. All right. So the first thing you want to do is to click in here. All right. You will see the container element in here. Do not use this one. Just simply click on the plus button in here and then choose the two uh, column structure in here. So for the first column in here, I'm going to go ahead right now and add our elements. We have the header. I'm going to go ahead now and paste the text. Let me make some quick changes. Go to style, typography, size. We're going to go with 55 pixels. Transformation will be capitalized. And there it is. I'm going to drag the text editor. Let me quickly grab the text right here. Let me paste the text. Okay. And then last but not least, we do have two buttons, which I will drag right now, button one, and then we have button two as well. Okay. So how are we going to display our two buttons side by side? I'm going to go to the container button right here and introduce you to the features. First of all, we do have content width where you can choose full width or box. We're going to stick with full width or 50%. Minimum height, we don't need to touch. Now, in here, this is where things get very, very interesting. We have the items and then the direction. The default here is going to be column vertical. So basically, basically the container is going to display the elements on top of each other in a column vertical kind of format. You do have the reverse right here. And if I was to choose the reverse, now you have the last elements being displayed on top and the first element being displayed last. Okay. But then we now have the row horizontal. And if I choose the first option, the container will attempt to display all the elements side by side. The problem here is that you can see that the elements will begin to bump into each other. There's plenty of overlap. You also have the row reversed where again, you will have the last elements being displayed first, the first element being displayed last. Okay. The thing right now is that even though we've been able to achieve having the two buttons side by side, we're having a massive problem of the elements overlapping themselves. And this is where I'm going to introduce you to something very beautiful called the wrap function right here. I am going to say wrap and there it is. <laughs> That's like magic, right? I know. I know. It's so, it's so wonderful. Basically what the wrap function does, it's that it's saying, okay, look, we want to display our elements side by side in a row format, but then only display them side by side. As long as there's enough space for the elements to exist side by side, without them overlapping each other. That's the whole point of wrap. As long as there's enough space for the elements to be side by side, you can display them side by side. If there isn't enough space, then let the elements stack up on top of each other. Let me prove it to you. 
I'm going to choose the very first button in here, go to advanced, right here you have width, let's go with the custom width and I'm going to expand, increase the width. Now notice as I'm increasing the width, the second button is being pushed to the right, 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 and once I pass 75%, now you can see that the button has dropped to the next line. That's because there isn't enough space for it to be displayed side by side. So that's exactly how the wrap function works. It is freaking amazing. Now you do have other options in here like justify content where you can align your elements either to the center, you can provide more space between them, space around and so on. You also have the align elements which works like the vertical align in your CSS where you can align the elements uh, either in the middle of the, of the uh, like in the middle height, lower height, upper height, things like that. So you can use this to like vertically align your elements. You will not see it in action in here because the elements are basically stacked up on top of each other. We're not really vertically aligning anything in here. That's why you don't see uh, the actual uh, effect in use, but do know that you do have these options in here. You can also increase the gap between your elements if you want to, uh, but we'll just set this one to the default uh, 20 for now. The default is 20. Okay, that's that for the first column. Now the second column, we're gonna do some things real quick. First of all, I'm gonna choose the row horizontal in here, okay? And then the gap between the elements, we're actually, we're actually gonna set this one to zero Okay, we're going to add the pattern directly to the images themselves. Okay, so we don't need any gap between the elements. And then we'll also provide a wrap as well. Okay, and that is it. I'm going to go ahead right now and add the very first element in here, which is going to be the image. So let's drop that in there. I am going to choose the Brazilian flag. All right, I'm going to make some changes in here. First, I'm going to go over to advanced, the padding. We're going to add five pixels around and then for the width, we're going to go with custom and I'm going to set this one to 50%. And there it is. Now I can simply go ahead, duplicate and now we have our second image. I am going to duplicate again and again. Now all I'll do right now is to simply change the images, choose the German flag as the second. For the third flag in here, we have, uh, we have the Thai flag. And then the first flag in here, we have the Spanish flag, Espanol, okay. And now for the third row that has three images, let me show you. Again, you can see we've got three images in here. How do we achieve that? Very simple. I'm gonna go ahead right now, duplicate one more time. Notice by the way, what's happening in the very first column. Have you, on the first container right there, have you noticed that there is now more space between the elements. We'll talk about that a bit later, okay? But now for the final row and the second container, I'm going to edit the image right here, go to advanced, change the width right here from 50 to 33.3, and there it is. I'm gonna go ahead now, duplicate and duplicate. And now let's make the final changes to the content themselves. We have the Russian flag. Okay, and then we have the Argentine flag. And then we have the Colombian flag. And there it is. And there it is. We've been able to successfully create the image gallery and our second container. But now take a look at the first column where we now have the elements being stretched. What has happened? Why do we now have so much space? between the header, the paragraph text, and the buttons. See, the thing is, the Flexbox container will try to match the height of both columns, okay, of both containers. As we started adding more flags, more images to the second column, the height began to increase, and as a result, the Flexbox container tried to also stretch the elements in the first column to try and match the height of the second column. So if we don't want this, what we could simply do is to go back to the first container in here and then right here where you have align content, simply go from default to flex start. So now basically we're saying, hey, we don't want you to create any uh, unnecessary white space. Don't try to match the height of the second container, you do you. So in a real world, 
if you wanted to make this a bit more even because now the second container is just way too tall there are several things you could do if you wanted to we could simply duplicate the second column uh, I'm sorry, duplicate the first paragraph of text in here and have a second paragraph, paragraph of text or in reality we could actually simply make the width of the first container in here a bit wider so now you can see it's a bit more even and yeah we can stop at let's say 90% as an example okay like in a real world uh, scenario and that is basically it this is how to use your flexbox container to display uh, elements in more advanced structures than your typical uh, section column and so on let me just go ahead now and view the page and there it is it is right here there it is and of course we can also add uh, patterns as well in fact let me just quickly do that real quick I'm gonna add some padding to the uh, main container itself so it looks a bit more presentable all right so right here let's go to advanced and then pad in let me unlink this one I'm gonna add uh, 45 on the top and then 45 and the bottom and there it is update one more time view the page and there it is looking much much better so that's basically how to walk with the flexbox container thank you for watching the video i will see you in the next class